Well, praise the Lord. Uh, so again, those of you who don't know us, uh, my name is Michael Germi, and I have my wife sitting right at the back, Emily, and we got married about four years ago. This next month, August, it will be four years, and the Lord has blessed us with Gabriel, who is three, and then two daughters, twins, Esther and Grace. Um, so um, I got saved out of Islam, as I mentioned this morning, grew up as a Muslim in Iran, and at the age of 26, I went to Australia in Sydney. I lived there for three years. And after three years, miraculously, by God's providence, I was invited to a church. And I heard the gospel. And I realized that I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I'm going to hell. That Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And he shed his blood. He took our punishment. Yeah. And uh, so by trusting him as your savior, you're not going to be pun punished for your sins in hell. He'll save you from hell. He'll be your savior. And you have relationship with God Almighty, your creator. Yeah. And so I put my trust in Jesus that day. Uh, it was not easy for me to reject Islam and Allah and Muhammad. And as they teach in Islam that if you renounce your faith, you definitely, you're going to hell. So I renounced my faith in Allah. And by faith, I put my trust in Jesus. Because Allah doesn't promise eternal life. There's no assurance of salvation. Muhammad never said that he would give us eternal life, but Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. So I didn't want to, um, well, it was obvious to me that Jesus, uh, not only he promises eternal life, but he proved it in action. He raised people from the dead. He healed the blind. Muhammad had done nothing, no miracles, nothing from Muhammad. So which one would you trust. Um, uh, well, obviously, I put my trust in Jesus that day. Sadly, Muslims are not taught about who Jesus is, his work and his identity, what he has done on the cross, what he promises. Uh, the Muslims are, all the time, they are told that the Bible is corrupted. You cannot trust it. And Jesus is a prophet, not God. That's greatest sin, our unpardonable sin in Islam is to to associate partner with God. That means to have another God beside the true God. You call, you call Jesus the Son of God, you call that He is God, another deity. That means you believe in two gods. That's unpardonable sin and that, that will condemn you to hell. So um, God's word was powerful. Just reading it and hearing the gospel, I put my trust in Jesus and He saved me, and I'm so thankful. Uh, today that he saved me and inc included me to his family. Sure. Um, sounds like this is not working. Uh, okay, here we go. It's working. So the Lord started using me back in Sydney, and, and I partnered with, with Pastor Piper there, who led me to the, to the Lord. And we saw hundreds of Iranians and Afghanis come to Christ. And that led um, planting of church in in Sydney. So we had English service, and in 2012, uh, many Farsi speaking Muslims got saved, and they didn't speak in English, some of them. So we started this Iranian church, Farsi speaking church, in 2012. So I preached for six years, and after six years, the Lord led me to come to America to record messages in his studio to get the gospel to three countries that speak in Farsi, Iran and Afghanistan and Tajikistan, total of 110 million people speak in Farsi. Those countries are close to the gospel. Uh, you cannot go there as a missionary. It's been 17 years now I've been out of country. And I cannot go back to Iran. That's where I grew up right here. I cannot go back. I, I miss my country. I miss my family and I miss my uh, friends over there back in Iran, but I cannot go back anymore. And it's sad. But the Lord is using media and saving many souls. In fact, if you search online, Iran is fastest church-growing country in the world. More people are coming to Christ in Iran than in Canada or America. Uh, I'm talking about, I'm not church-growing, I'm not talking about building. Uh, this is not building. In fact, when we came to, uh, to here, to this church this morning, my son, Gabriel, he's been to many hotels and he's been to many churches. He's like, this is not church. I'm like, yeah, you're right. This is not. He knows that this is hotel. This is not a church. I'm like, yeah, this is not church. I understand. But they meet here. 
So church is not just building, but body of believers in Christ. They meet together. They they uh, they watch uh, this gospel programs on TV, and they hear the gospel, and they get saved, and that's their church. Sadly, I wish they were preachers there preaching. I wish they had pastors over them to lead them to the Lord and, and disciple them, but they don't have it. So the media is the only way. They, they hear the gospel. They learn the Bible, and God is saving many souls there, and and uh, so it's which is amazing god and also afghanistan also many are are turning to christ from from islam in afghanistan and then apart from my media ministry um, that we've seen many come to christ the lord has been leading me to evangelize persians that are scattered around the world many iranians have seen what islam had done to our country, all the destruction, people are under the bondage, there's no future, no hope for people there, and uh, this regime is destroying the country, investing on terrorism for years, and a lot of people are educated in Iran, but unemployed, and uh, many people at the age of like 30 and 40, and some 50 still single, single because they can't afford to get married, to provide for their wives and family, they can't even survive themselves. So absolutely there is no hope and a lot of people are uh, under stress and pressure so they, they do drugs and they're going to be relieved from that stress and drugs doesn't help them. In fact, it destroys their lives. And so a lot of people are under pressure. They, they just want to get out of that environment. They flee. They, go, they cannot go to the West. It's not easy to come to Canada or America, but it's easy for them to, to go to neighboring countries, to Armenia, Turkey, and other places in order to come to the West one day. So the Lord let me go to, go to Armenia two years ago to reach out to Persians that are living in Armenia. So this is a picture that I took with my camera. This is the border. The other side, this side is Turkey, and this side is Armenia. The Bible says in Genesis that Noah's ark was landed in the mountains of Ararat, mountains with S at the end, plural. You have to pay attention to that little S at the end. It say mountains of Ararat, and you ask why? Because there are two of them. You see, these are mountains of Ararat, two of them, and it's fascinating. It was just beautiful scene to look at that. And yeah. about 5,000 years ago, Noah's Ark was landed somewhere there. I don't know where exactly, but it landed right there. Uh, that proves the Bible that is so accurate. There is evidence. When you read something in the Bible, there is always evidence out there somewhere in the Bible, uh, in, in, in the world. In fact, you'll see another evidence uh, uh, that I've seen with my eyes that proves the Bible. We'll see it in, in a little bit. So Armenia. So I went there and I, to I told my family members back in Iran to my parents and my siblings. I told them that I'm coming to Armenia. And um, my mom, in fact, when I, when I got saved, I wanted to reach out to my family. I wanted to share the gospel with them because I knew that they are lost. They're going to hell. My dad, my mom, they are sweet, good people, but they are going to hell without Christ. So I called them and I wanted to witness to them. My mom picked up the phone and I said, Mom, I want to give you good news. Guess what happened? And she said, what happened, my son? Tell me. I said, I, I became a Christian. I asked Jesus to, to be my Savior. She said, what? I said, I became a Christian. I'm so excited. She said, how dare did you become a Christian? Who brainwashed you and, uh, and you become an infidel? How dare did you become a Christian? She got angry and she got mad. And she cursed me. She put a curse in my life for becoming an infidel. Because to them, in Islamic environment, when you convert from Islam to other religion, to Christianity especially, uh, to them, the, it's like you rejecting God and you live like a dog, <laughs> kind of. You become heathen. You become godless. And that's so rude, uh, to family, to re you disregard your family, your uh, community. You telling that your father is wrong, is going false way, and re you reject his God. You become like heathen, uh, because back there, everybody is Muslim, and uh, they think that in the West it's same thing. Everybody is Christian, and obviously there's no church to see how Christians are like. There's no Christian around them. Almost everybody is Muslim. 
And so they think that in the West, everybody is Christian. And how do they know Christianity? They don't know Christianity through seeing Christians or going to church to see, check them for themselves. So they, they know Christianity through Hollywood. All the movie and uncleanness and immorality that they see, they think that they are Christian. Christians live that way. They are immoral. You became a Christian like them. You, you became like godless, infidel. She cursed me. And it was hard for me to hear that from my mom, uh, her mouth, that she cursed me. So anyway, I told them, I said, I'm coming to Armenia. Would you like to come? I didn't tell them what we're doing, like evangelistic meetings, uh, because they wouldn't have come. So they thought that we're going to have family vacation. Uh, so my mom calmed down after years, over the years, and uh, she wasn't getting much angry anymore, but she was just frustrated all the time. She said, why don't you get married? Your friends are all married and their kids married and their kids are going to the school. You still, you, you claiming to be Christian and you, you are so religious now. Uh, so anyway, so they came to Armenia. Seven of them came. My mom came, three sisters and their children came. And I was nervous. I didn't tell them what we were doing, but they followed me after the breakfast and they came, they sat there, and I started preaching, and they listened. These are my family members sitting there. They listened, and I preached, and they didn't say anything. In the morning, I preached. In the afternoon service, evening service, three times a day, preached first day, second day. On the third day, I preached in the morning and in the afternoon. And then we had two, three hours break between afternoon and evening ser uh, service. And I was in the hotel lobby, and I was talking to an Armenian lady with her son. I was witnessing to them, telling them about Jesus. And uh, my sister, one of them came. Uh, the sister here on the right, Sakina, she came to me, and she, wanted, she said that she wants to become a Christian. I'm like, what? And both of them, uh, Zainab, my older sister, they said, she said, when I see you Christians, you are full of love and you sing with joy and you rejoice. And the messages that we heard, it's so different, full of power. And over there in Islam, we have to cry and shed tears to beg Allah to have mercy on us. But you rejoice here and so different. The messages are so different than the Quran. I want that. And then my older sister said, she said, I want to become, I, I, want to, I need to be changed. I said, yes, you must be born again, Jesus said. Unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must have a new nature. With old nature, you cannot go to heaven. Uh, you must be forgiven and have new natures. I said, well, I'm going to preach the gospel tonight. And if you want, you come to the altar and receive Jesus as your Savior, and you'll be Christians. And I preached the gospel that night, and 20 souls came to Christ, including my three sisters. They came with tears in their eyes. They Kneel down and every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is the Lord. And that's what they confessed. They didn't confess that Jesus is a prophet anymore. Yeah. But he was the Lord that day. And I was just rejoicing to see my family members and other Iranians getting saved. 20 souls. And I, my mom also went to the hotel room and she speaks in Azari. Uh, I grew up speaking Azari, which is different than Farsi language. So she didn't understand everything, but I got to share the gospel with her. Just she saw everything there, just Christianity. And she's been watching, they have been watching my programs on TV for over the years. So these factors uh, caused her that she also received Jesus as her Savior that night. I was just rejoicing, glorifying God for what He did in my own family lives there. And they had baptism in a lake. Uh, in Armenia. So that was Armenia. 20 souls got saved. And then last year, the Lord led me to go to Turkey. So I, I, I've been discipling many converts uh, over the Skype, like Zoom call, video call. And these people, they joined from Iran, from Turkey, and other places. And I disciple them three times a week. And Ajang is the man that I've been discipling for five years. But last year, we started praying about planting a church in Turkey where he lives. And uh, I asked the Lord, we started to pray, and I said, Lord, is this something that you want us to do, or is this something that we think that it's right to do? Would you show me, if it's your will, would you confirm with me? So I was praying that the Lord would show me if he wants us to go there to Turkey to plant a church, a house of the Lord. And as I was 
reading the Bible, the Lord sp spoke to me through 2 Chronicles 29 from the life of Hezekiah again. This morning we learned about him that he did which was right in the sight of the Lord. And it says that in the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord because it was closed for a long time, for decades. In fact, probably for a century, the house of the Lord was closed and it was dusty. It was just getting destroyed. The doors were just being destroyed. And he repaired them. And he brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them together in the east street and said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord, God of your fathers, and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. For our fathers have trespassed and done that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord, our God, and have forsaken him, and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord, and so on. The Jews, the kings before him, they turn nation into idolatry. They worshipped idols and the house of the Lord was closed for a long time. He became a king at the age of 25 and he had zeal. He wanted to restore the worship of Jehovah. He understood that without Jehovah, the, the God of the Bible, God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, will be under the bondage. We're not going to be blessed. He didn't want to be cursed. He wanted to be blessed. So he wanted to bring the source of all blessings on life. He wanted to bring Jehovah, the house of worship. He restored the worship of Jehovah. He understood it is important for God's people to have a place of worship. And it's important for us to have church. Without church, we're not going to be edified and encouraged in faith to grow. So reading this, the Lord spoke to me. And I realized that there are 4 million Refugees living in Turkey, they flee Iran and Afghanistan, their countries, they go to Turkey uh, to become refugees under UN. They, there's UN, UN, United Nations refugee camps there. And they live there for years and after years they get approved, their visa get approved to come to Canada or Australia, America, to European countries. So four million of them, obviously many, many of them don't know the Lord and there's no place of worship. There's no church. So the Lord spoke to me through this. So I asked the Lord if he wants me to go by myself or take my family. We had twins, five months old. Very clearly the Lord uh, gave us peace to go as a family. So I took my family there. And because we go into Turkey, it's, it's hard country for Christianity. So we went there. We took a helper with us and with, with kids. And, and we started witnessing to Iranians and Afghanis, we saw Mina getting saved, Iranian lady, Afghani man, Nabi got saved. And so we had a church established, a house church. We called it Duzje Baptist Church. That's a city um, where Ajang lived, Duzje Baptist Church, house church. So we, I started preaching and training them for about two months. And after two months, uh, we, we wanted to have a conference to reach out to other Persians there to see more souls getting saved. And some people traveled from town to come. Some people traveled from south of Turkey to come to the conference. And uh, while I was in Turkey, we stayed there for three months as a family. While I was in Turkey, I was able to witness to two sisters. This is giving me hard time. hard time. Okay, two sisters. And I was able to lead them to the Lord. And one of them, this younger sister at the age of 70-something, she traveled... Uh, here, here is she. She traveled with her younger sister. She came to the conference to get baptized. She traveled from Iran to come to Turkey to get baptized, uh, which was amazing. So some of my disciples came from Iran. I never, never met them, but I got to see them in person. Again, my, I told my family members back in Iran, my parents and siblings, that I, I said, we're coming to Turkey. I'm going to bring my wife and my kids and and they got so excited. Eight of them came and they got to meet my wife for the first time. They got to, meet, to see my children for the first time. It was just glorious uh, family time together. And these are my, my parents. Uh, my wife wanted to get to know my family members, uh, my siblings, and, and my dad and my mom. So we took them out. We were so busy during the conference. Ten days we were just preparing for the conference and preaching. It was so busy, but we took time for lunch. Uh, my wife wanted to get to know each family member every day. So on the third day, we took our parents out to, uh, to eat, to a restaurant. 
And I noticed that my dad, his hands were shaking like this. And I said, what happened to you, dad? I, and he said, because of you preaching over there, we are under persecution. They come after us. They take us to interrogation, you know, for interrogation. And they give us hard time, this Iranian regime. I said, I'm, I'm sorry, dad, but I can't stop preaching. I've been called to preach. And uh, he said that he didn't want to come this trip because he, he slipped, his foot slipped a few years ago on snow in winter and he fell and he broke his lower back. And it's, it's been hard for him to travel at the airport, walking long distance to, to go on the board and everything. But he said that he believed that he's not going to make it to the summer. He believed that he's going to die before summer. So he wanted to come and see me before he dies. I said, Dad, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you don't have to worry about death. He said, I am the resurrection and life. He can give you eternal life if you believe in him. So I started sharing the gospel with him. That gave me good conversation topic. And I shared the gospel with him. And I knew that it's not going to be easy for him because he's been already under persecution there in Iran. Threats and everything he's been receiving. He's going to be hard. But I shared the gospel with him and I challenged him at the end. If he wants to receive Jesus as his savior, he said yes. He, pr he prayed right there in a the restaurant and received Jesus as his savior. So you can get saved in a restaurant. At the age of 78, he got saved. I was just rejoicing. I'm like, yes. I was just worried for years. I was just crying. I said, Lord, would you save my dad, my mom? They are so close to hell. They are almost, they can die any time now. And uh, so the Lord saved them, and I'm rejoicing now. All my family members are saved now, except my older brother, Ali. Pray for Ali to be saved. And I'm rejoicing after, it took 12 years for my dad, my, my mom, and other siblings to come to Christ. So that was Duzze. We established that church, and some people traveled from Denizli to come to our conference in Duzze. And after five days of preaching, those people who came from Dennis Lee, they said, 11 of them, they said, what are we going to do? Are we going back to Dennis Lee? There's no church to go to. What are we going to do? It's like Macedonian call. Like, come and help us. We need a church there. Uh, and Holy Spirit spoke to me. And I'm like, uh, he said, why don't you go there and, and do the same thing and plant a church? And I'm like wrestling in my heart, thinking as they, as they were talking to me. And I'm like, Lord, how can I go to Dennis Lee and plant a church. In two, we had two weeks time to get back to America, and I had to come back to graduate from my seminary studies. And one last final week, I have to pack and get ready as a family to come back to America, but only one week practically I have time. How can I plant the church in one week, Lord? It's impossible. And very clearly, he said, yes, it is impossible with you, but not with me. Yeah. I'm like, okay. And then I noticed that other people, as we were talking, they started talking about going there and planting a church. And I realized that Holy Spirit speak to us. He is leading us to go there, obviously. And I said, hey, let's go by faith and see what the Lord is going to do in Denizli. So we traveled from Duzje, seven, eight hours to go to Denizli, which is in southwest of, uh, uh, of Turkey, where seven Asian, uh, Asia Minor churches are. Izmir is Smyrna, Ephesus. It's right, right in that, that area. So we went to Denizli. Denizli is a city where Colossi was located. Colossi, Colossi City, 2,000 years ago. It's been ruined through earthquake last 2,000 years. Now there is nothing left of Colossi, but the site is there. It's beautiful, mountainous, lots of uh, spring of cold fresh water you could we stopped to get cold water to drink and it was it was amazing so that's Colossi and also we have Heropolis located in Denizli as well Heropolis has spring up mineral hot water coming from mountain and people go there to take a bath and doing that they believe that they get healed from skin disease so this hot water it's been there last 2000 years same hot water spring uh, and Heropolis. And also we have Laodicea. The Laodicean city is still there. The ruins of the city is still there. This is Laodicean church. We took picture at front of Laodicean church. Which is known for what? Laodicean church. Look warm, right? Look warm. And Jesus wants this church, look warm, Laodicean church, to be either cold or hot, but not look warm. Yeah. God doesn't like it. And, and you read that in Revelation 3. 
He wants them to be called. Like when I, when, you, when I interpret that, called, that means he wants them to be called. That means reject God, reject church, renounce your faith, be called. Don't, don't believe in God. Or be hot, like on fire for the Lord. But don't be lukewarm. Sure. Do you think that God would ask you to be called to reject God? Not so. You know, Jesus spoke. Uh, he was using nature to illustrate the truth always. Consider the fowls of the air. Or behold, the sower went to sow a seed and, and so on. He was always using nature. When he spoke to Laodicean church, he said, he wanted them to be cold. He was referring to Colossi water that was cold and refreshing. He said, be a refreshing church like Colossi water or be, be like Heropolis water that is hot. Be a healing Christian, but don't be like Laodicean. Laodicean water was lukewarm. You couldn't drink it. You couldn't take a bath to be healed. It was good for nothing. So Jesus was using that illustration uh, to, to tell them that you are useless. He was speaking about uselessness of Laodicean church. Why? Because they were rich, increased with good, need of nothing, and they kicked Jesus out of church. And Jesus outside the church, at the door, behind the door, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man open the door, I will come in and stop with him and so on. So he was speaking to Laodicean church, in fact. They had all kinds of program riches and everything at church, but Jesus wasn't there. No power of God. And Jesus graciously wanted to come in to bless them and their program and everything. And just seeing this, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, it, it, it opened my eyes, but also it, get, it proves the Bible that is very accurate because there is evidence out there. Jesus was speaking about Colossi water. Colossi's water is still there. Heropolis water, hot water is still there. And, and he was illustrating this uh, truth to Laodicean church that, that was lukewarm and many churches are lukewarm these days sadly uh, and so so we started having conference there and we saw uh, so many about 40 people turned up first day and 60 next day and 70 80 people turned up and I preached and and souls got saved every night uh, we had 23 souls getting saved and uh, and they got baptized I took them to a place which was supposed to be yeah, young, two young couples. I led them to the Lord. They, this couple especially, they came to church for the first time. They never been to church, never seen a Bible in their lives. They were blown away. They said, oh, I didn't know what Christianity was about. Like their, uh, their eyes were like open. I could tell they were blown away. And uh, they said, this is amazing. I didn't know what Christianity is about. And I said, can I tell you how you can be sure of going to heaven? They said, yeah. So I took them to hotel lobby and I shared the gospel with them and they trusted Jesus. They praying now, receiving Jesus as their savior. So the Lord was just working and doing many miracles and saving souls. So I took them to this place that was supposed to be swimming pool. That was not swimming pool. It was public bath that Turkish people, they take a bath there in, and then in hot, hot, uh, hot water. Uh, and uh, they scrub their backs like half an hour, all getting all the dirt out and everything, and so hot water, and then they come to this jacuzzi, it's called, they call it jacuzzi, cold water. They get there to, to be refreshed now. They've been hot, scrubbed, and hot. Now they're going to be refreshed, cold water. So we had no choice. That was the only choice. We took them there to baptize in the cold water. And uh, But then as I was baptizing, there was... A man on the other jacuzzi, he said, Amin, Amin, Amen, in Farsi accent. And uh, he, he was not Christian, but he wanted to get baptized. And I said, well, it's good that you want to be baptized, but you must be born again first. Can I tell you how to be born again? He said, yes. So I, after baptizing those people, I, I sat there and, and I told him how he can be sure of going to heaven. I told him about Jesus, how he died on the cross. And he, and he, he said, in fact, I've been reading book of Psalms and, and following some Christian channels. I like to hear about it. So I shared the gospel with him and he trusted Jesus as his yeah. savior. Yeah. And I baptized him. He's the man right there. And he had four other friends with him. All four other friends next day came to Christ. So five souls get, got saved just going to that place for baptism. God was doing so many miracles in Turkey. And these 23 people have been saved and baptized. Now they need a place of worship. They need church. What are we going to do? So we looked for a building. We looked and nobody wanted to rent out their buildings to a church. 
They don't like church because they're Muslim, most of them, all of them, in fact, almost. And so we couldn't find. And next day we were supposed to go back to Duzja and then fly back to America. So we couldn't find. So I had to stay another two, three, three more days looking. We were so exhausted looking for a building. Finally, we found this building. The owner agreed to give it to us. So we took this wall and became one big hall. And on the back, there's this room for like nursery for, for children. And so we were able to buy chairs and paint the wall and get pulpit and screen and projector, computer, cross and air conditioning unit. So we set it up. And uh, Muhammad and Behnaz, this couple that I led to the Lord back in Iran, they lived in Iran. I was able to lead them to the Lord over a video call. Muhammad got saved and his wife Behnaz, they've been living in Turkey uh, last four years. And they came and I asked them if they could lead the church. And he was so excited. So he's leading the church. We called it, we didn't call it Laodicean Baptist Church. We called it Colossi Baptist Church. <laughs> so it's called Colossi Baptist Church. Muhammad is leading that church while Ajang, the other man, is leading Duzje Baptist Church. So God was doing, we went there to plant the church. And Arab Blue, the Lord, uh, planted two churches. And we send the light. And they had opening service. They set it up and everything. Muhammad is leading the church. And I got to preach for opening service through a Skype call. And they got to see me preaching. So my, pray for Muhammad. I'm going to, in fact, go back there in a couple of weeks. I'm going to go back again to have another evangelistic meetings there to reach out to other Persians in town. I pray that the Lord would save souls there in, in Turkey. And then... Early this year, just a few months ago, the Lord led me to go to Tajikistan to reach out to train some Afghani believers that they fled Taliban a couple of years ago when Taliban took over the country. They live in Tajikistan as a refugee, and they hope that one day they're going to come to the West. So I went there to train these new believers in a Bible institute, and uh, I trained them, taught them hermeneutics, and... This man here, Ali, he said that his, uh, his visa is about to be approved and he's going to be able to come to Canada. And he did. He's in Cal Calgary. He's like 15 minutes away, in fact, or 20 minutes away from this church. I told him to come, yeah. and he was supposed to come, but sounds like he wasn't able to make it. But I told him about this conference in Vancouver. He, he traveled. He came to Vancouver to our conference there. So it's amazing to see how the Lord works in their lives and he saves them and he, they get trained and now they're getting everywhere to other countries and pray that the Lord would use this Afghanis. Afghanistan is in bad shape and they need Jesus and the Lord is working. Pray that the Lord would use these believers to spread the gospel wherever they go. Amen. So that's a Bible Institute and this man got saved in the Bible Institute and they, they uh, tell others about uh, their loved ones about Jesus Christ. So Samim got saved two months ago, and then he led his two sisters to the Lord. He's giving them Farsi Bibles. It's just so encouraging to see. And then uh, just uh, lately, the Lord led me to come to Vancouver to reach out to Persians. We have a lot of Persian community in Vancouver, so many Persians living in Vancouver. So we went to Vancouver. This is this family photo in Crescent Beach, I believe it was, in Vancouver, beautiful place. Uh, but lots of broken people, I, as I mentioned, beautiful place, but we saw so many drug addicts there in East Vancouver and in Chilevac, we stayed in Chilevac, you see so many, and my wife said, why are they so walking like bent over? I said, drug, drug is destroying their lives, they reject God, they give place to the devil to destroy their lives, now they bend it, they bow to Satan, to drug, they don't bow to God. That's sad. If you reject God, that's, that's the future. If not in this life, next life, you'll be broken forever. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, and some, a lot of churches in Vancouver, they didn't have building, church building. We met in a, in a park. One, Pastor Mackay, you probably know him. A lot of churches are struggling because it's so expensive here. <laughs> wow, so expensive. Pastor Ben Turner is the man who invited me to come to, to work with him to reach out to Persians. So July 16th to 19th, for four days, we had meetings and, 
And I, I, we went out to North Vancouver where a lot of Persians live. And we were team up seven, eight people. We were hand, going there, handing out flyers. And some, sometimes I took my family, my wife and kids. We were handing flyers. We gave out thousands of flyers, invited them to come. And uh, so this is people, couple that I, uh, I'm giving flyers to them. And they were Persians everywhere. And Persian restaurants, we stopped to get Persian meal there, and it was so delicious. <laughs> and so on Sunday evening, I started to preach, and these are just a couple uh, that joined us to give out flyers. And uh, let's see. Yeah, this is Ali, his family. They live in Calgary. Um, I need to tell them to visit this church. Um, I'm not sure if they have church to go to. And Yasin, he just, he found uh, Anchor Baptist Church just a few days before, before the meetings. The Lord is working in his heart, his life. He was Pentecostal, but he started reading the Bible. He realized that the church that he's going to, it's not a biblical church. So he, he left the church, and he was looking for a church for, for 13 months. And reading the Bible seriously and studying and researching, he realized that King James Bible is the most accurate Bible for English-speaking people. And he realized that Baptist church seemed to be biblical church this day. So he started looking for a Baptist church, and Anchor Baptist church showed up. And he, he clicked the website, and he listened to a sermon by Pastor Ben Turner. He was preaching against sin. He was shocked. He said, I never heard this kind of preaching, preaching against sin back in my charismatic church. So he visited the church, Pastor Ben Turner, and... Uh, and he was there. He was a blessing to us. So I started preaching on Sunday, laid the foundation how the Bible is not corrupted as Muslims claim, but it, it is uh, trustworthy and it's, it's a word of God. And on second day, on Monday, I, I examined Islam and I taught about the deity of Jesus Christ, the Trinity. And on the second day, as I preached, uh, 10 souls came to Christ. Amen. 10 Muslims got saved. And on the third day, we had three souls getting saved. Yeah, you see the Muslims, they come into the altar, they got saved. Well, I praise the Lord. God is working in the lives of Muslims. When they come sit under the preaching of God's word, God's word is power, sharper than two-edged sword. Yeah. And, and 13 people. And then there was another lady who, who uh, prayed in her heart, but she didn't raise her hand or come to the altar. Later on, another lady told us that her friend who was visiting, in fact, she prayed in her heart and received Jesus as her Savior. So 14 souls got saved through that uh, meetings that we had in Vancouver. And three of them followed the Lord in believers' baptism, Reza and Muhammad and Mehdi. Three of them got baptized on Wednesday night. And uh, so that's Mehdi's getting baptized. And my wife has been playing violin, ministering through music, which has, she's been a blessing to us. So that's kind of uh, what the Lord has been doing lately in my life. And, and I'm going to go back to Turkey. But at the end, I'm going to ask you to pray for our basement. The Lord provided us a house last year in Wisconsin. That's where we live. And uh, I spoke to my mission board, Baptist World Mission, about turning our basement into the studio so I could uh, train more laborers there and record more messages so I don't have to travel from Wisconsin to Georgia, 14 hours drive to record messages. It's been so difficult with kids. So we, they approved the pro project. We've been raising funds for, for the studio, and the Lord has been providing already money for it. And the first phase is to finish the basement. You see it's not finished. And, and we started working on it as the Lord provided. And we did uh, drywall. And it's getting ready. We have to, when we go back, we're going to do flooring. And we're going to do doors and, and painting. And it'll be ready. And then that's first phase. The Lord provided funds for it. Second phase is to do a different studio background, different background. And then third phase is to get equipment cameras and, and microphone and, and computers, so on, to be able to have decent professional studio, uh, to be able to use it for satellite TV and Skype Bible studies three times a week and online Bible college also. I've been develop, developing that. I have five courses uploaded already, so I need to do more so the people in Iran and Afghanistan and other places can enroll for free and be trained 
to be able to preach the gospel. We have so many Iranians and Afghanis open to the gospel. They everywhere scattered, but we don't have Baptist preachers telling them how to be saved, sadly. So we need more laborers for sure. So pray that the Lord would help us to finish that studio. For third phase, we're raising $40,000 funds to be able to buy equipments and cameras and so on. Pray that the Lord would provide us funds for it. And also in the future, we're going to do produce spiritual songs and hymns in Farsi. We almost have nothing in Farsi. Most of them are jazzy, uh, CCM music, ungodly, it's so bad, doesn't glorify God. It glor glorifies you all, only in your flesh but not God. So my wife is talented. God has given her like uh, that gift to write music. So she's going to help us with that 